So what kind of tree can you hold in your hand? A palm tree. Palm tree. Terrible. Perfect. So this is Nike's biggest Air Max to date, but is bigger always better? On today's episode, we are reviewing the Nike Air Max Scorpion. Now, this Air Max Scorpion, I'm very, very conflicted about it. But of course, before anything, let's start off with the box. Right, so we've seen on the Nike Air Max Flying It Racer that Nike are sort of going for that reusable, recycled box. So if you wanted to repackage them or even send them back, you can do without another box. But what kind of gets me though, is they are double boxing it to send me it in the first place. But the only thing worth really looking at is the product sticker. And it does actually say Nike Air Max Scorpion Flying It. And the official colorway is Phantom Black and Light Cream. Right, there is a lot to talk about with this shoe, but the pricing, I guess, is where we'll start. So the most expensive Air Max at the moment were, of course, the Vapor Max line. The recent Vapor Max was touching £200, and this one pushes it even further. These retail for £225 here in the UK. And bruh, the way the world is at the moment, I don't know if people are willing to pay that money. But I guess if you really do like them, like people are willing to buy Yeezys for around 250 then I guess they'll pay for them. But as we see more colorways and as we see a wider release, I can see these dropping in price very, very quickly. In terms of price point, I could put these at around 150. That's how much I would be willing to pay at retail. Now these did release pretty early here in the UK on size of all retailers. And that's the only retailer I've seen have them, not even Nike Direct. But I wasn't complaining. An early look to these is always a good thing. So going back to the whole Vapor Max thing, this sneaker defo has the same vibe. It's kind of like the Vapor Max Flying It Freeze on steroids. And when I posted these on the community tab, someone said the air units look like blisters and I just can't unsee it. But we'll pause the waffle there. If you're thinking about grabbing these, you're thinking about, of course, the sizing. Now I'm not gonna make this longer than it needs to be. These were pretty much true to size, for myself anyway. Now, although they are pretty narrow though, so if you are a wide footer, maybe go half a size up. But for myself, going true to size was perfect. And I go true to size with the likes of the Air Max 90, the Air Max 1, and so on. So I'd say stick true to size. Right, I guess the moment you've been properly waiting for, it is time to take an up close and personal look at these. Now, bruh, I don't know what size I was playing at, but it looks like I've nicked these actually from the store. They left the security tag on my left shoe and I haven't been bothered to go back to the store to remove it. Because I'm still in two minds in terms of keeping the shoe or not, I don't know whether I can be bothered. And I'm pretty shook to remove it myself just in case it dies the whole shoe and then they're completely useless. So broskies, I know I look like an absolute lemon wearing these on the B-roll shots, but it's not my fault. Size, honestly, I don't know what happened there. But anyways, broskies, in terms of the actual look of this shoe, I don't know where to start. But I guess we'll talk about the best looking part of this shoe, in my opinion, and that's the upper. It is of course Nike's flying it material on the upper, but it has different textures to it. We do have those black Nike swooshes on both sides of this shoe, which has a nice design to it. The lower half to the upper does have a more structured look, but if we move up closer to the ankle collar and the laces, very similar to what we had on the new Nike Air Force One Flyknits. But other than that, we do have that mini Nike swoosh going up just near the toe box. And then we've got these strings that act as lace holes. And bruh, I don't know how these will hold up over time because they look very frail. But the laces themselves do feel very spongy and they don't feel the most premium, but I guess it works well with the shoe. Now the tongue is sort of half infused with the upper, but the other half is sort of loose. Now we've got the Air Max branding going up sideways in this weird dotted texture. And I won't lie to you broskies, it took me a bit of a while to figure out what it actually said. But the less we say on that, the better. Now the sock liner is pretty much all flying it and it keeps its structure pretty well, but at the same time it's pretty flexible. We do have more padding towards the back of the heel and the insole is sort of this yellow color with that white Nike pinwheel, which of course signifies this is a Nike recycled shoe, which Nike do claim this is made with at least 20% recycled material. 
Now we do have that sideways Nike branding at the back on the heel tab, which I'll be honest, does add a nice look to it. Now going around the mod guard and the heel counter, we've got that sort of suede like material, which is more like felt, I wanna say. Right, the moment you have actually been waiting for, of course, the air unit. Now, although this looks more separated than my mum and dad, this is actually one air unit. Now, I guess you could say the sneaker does have a midsole, but it sort of connects it to the air unit, if anything. It's of that TPU material and just underneath the midsole, we have that foam which is so comfortable on foot. It does do a great job alongside the air unit to keep it comfy. Now, this being Nike's biggest air unit on any sneaker they've produced, it adds around five centimeters. And being that size, it was always gonna stand out. But making our ways to the outsole, it is the reason why this sneaker is actually called Scorpion. If you look at it from a certain angle, it has the same shape as a Scorpion which is very subtle, but it's actually pretty cool. But this design is a bit like Marmite. It's either you really like it, or just like Mario Winers, you don't even wanna know. We've got that speckled look to the traction panels towards the forefoot and right at the back with that recycled material. Very minimal Nike branding, just a Nike swoosh bang in the middle, and that's about it, broskies. Bruh, I honestly don't know if Nike were trolling us with this one because I just don't know what to say. I really don't. Yes, it is mad comfortable, don't get me wrong. It's probably the most comfiest Air Max sneaker I've ever tried on. But it's comfort enough in a sneaker that looks like this. Well, I guess now's the time to decide whether this is a buy or a buy. Right, I think we'll start off with the pros with this sneaker, and I'll be honest, there's not that many. For a lot of people, sneakers, and especially Air Max in general, height is on the priority list. And this silhouette defo adds a lot of height to you. I think it's around five centimeters that this silhouette adds, and if you're trying to go on a date and hit that six foot mark, then wear these. But other than the height that it does give you, I feel like the only real pro, in my opinion anyway, is how comfortable this sneaker is. Honestly, once you've gotten used to how it feels on foot and the unsturdiness to it, then it is so, so comfortable. It's defo one of those shoes you can wear for hours on end and not feel a thing. So I cannot fault Nike in that department. Defo the most comfiest Air Max I've ever put on my feet. And now let's move on to the cons because bruh, if I'm honest, there's a lot of them. Of course, the look of the shoe, in my opinion, is an absolute atrocity. Now the upper in itself is absolutely flawless. I can't really fault it because it does look pretty good but the blistered look to the air unit, I just can't do it, bruh, honestly. It looks like something out of The Last of Us, like one of those clickers or something. It just looks nasty. But I guess maybe because it's new, it might grow on me. But when I first saw these, I was like, nah, bruh, it's not it. Now, another thing that is sort of like a con, but I guess it's just the point I'm trying to make, is of course the durability. Now, one of my favorite silhouettes at the time was the Air Max 720, and that was the biggest air unit on any sneaker of its time. And when it came to my pair, just like so many other people as well, the air unit actually popped. And I am kind of skeptical with this shoe as well, just because of how big the air unit actually is. But I guess Nike do offer that two year manufacturing warranty, so you can still get your money back within that two years. But if you're spending so much on a shoe, do you really want to be worrying about that? And talking about pricing, that is exactly what I'm going to speak on next. £225 for a Nike Air Max is absolutely a madness. And yes, I am a mug. I've spent over £200 on an Air Max sneaker before, but it's on the resale market. But that's for the likes of the Concepts Heavy and the Air Max One Casino, so I was willing to pay that price. For a GR sneaker of this caliber, I just don't think it's worth that money. Nowhere near. And yes, we've sort of gotten used to the Vapor Max being more expensive than any other Air Max, and this one sort of takes its place. But when it comes to the money, I guess it's all subjective. But you know what? If these do actually go and sell pretty quickly, then I could recommend these. But at retail price, broskies, I gotta give these an absolute buy. But my broskies, please let me know down below what your thoughts are on the new Air Max Scorpion. Is this one you've been waiting for or does this price sting too much? Leave it all down below and I will pin the best comments. Anyways, thank you for watching. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to hit me up on IG as well because I'm most active over there. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share. And until the next video, take care. Thank you.